So in this recording I want to say a few things about gender in Somali. What is gender? Well, biologically it's the sex of a living being. But in grammar, uh, that's not um, the same uh, thing. In grammar, gender is a property that a noun has, and this property uh, of the noun makes other words behave in specific ways when other words are combined with a certain noun. Uh, as an example, let's take a few words of Slovenian. In Slovenian, the nouns belong to one of three different genders masculine gender, feminine gender, or neuter gender. Uh, and an adjective, like new, has to uh, agree with the noun. It has to show the same gender as the gender that the noun belongs to. So if coffee in Slovenian is a feminine word, kava, then also new has to be feminine, nova. And it's very simple in Slovenian because everything that is feminine ends in an a, a or an a. <clears throat> so the adjective simply ends in the same sound as the noun, nova, kava. And the neuter gender ends in o, novo, mesto. Uh, so you can tell very easily which gender the noun belongs to and then also what form the adjective has to take. Uh, but many languages don't have a gender at all. So, for example, Finnish, Hungarian, Persian, they don't even have different pronouns for she and he. They only have one pronoun. Finnish has hen, and it means both she and he at the same time, so it can be either uh, Hungarian has ö, uh, Persian has u. English has different pronouns. English has he, she and it. But uh, still English is not very much of a gendered language because the nouns don't have gender and the pronouns he and she, they are mainly used based on the sex of the person or the animal that we are talking about. So it's not something that follows from the noun itself, like in the Slovenian example, it followed from the last sound, the last letter of the noun. So if you talk about your pet, you can use he, she or it, uh, depending on different um, yeah, how you want to characterize your, your pet. Um, whereas languages like French, Spanish, Italian, German, all the Slavic languages, and Arabic, they have this very grammatical gender system. This is very different from the English system with only these pronouns. Uh, and uh, in many of these languages uh, you will be able to tell the gender of the noun from the article, from the definite article, and maybe also from the indefinite article, because there are different articles for the different genders. So in French, which has two genders, masculine and feminine gender, you have different indefinite article, un, jour, un for the masculine, une, une ville, une for the feminine, and also in the definite article is different, le for masculine and la for the feminine. So um, this is one of the ways in French to know, to, to find out which gender the noun belongs to. You, you combine it with an article and see which article the noun uh, takes. German has three genders, like Slovenian had three genders. Uh, in German you have to look at the definite article uh, in order to know which gender 
the noun belongs to because two of the genders take the same indefinite article. Ein can be both masculine and neuter, so you have to look at der or das in order to be sure if it's masculine or feminine. So, after this introduction, uh, so I, I want to show you that Somali has two genders. Uh, there is one gender where the definite article is ta, and the definite article in Somali is end, added to the end of the noun as an ending, as a suffix. So the shu is kapta, uh, with ta as the definite article. And fire, dap, takes another definite article, ka, dapka the fire. So we have these two genders in Somali. Words that take the definite article ta and words that take the definite article ka. Uh, and just for comparison, it's not that very exotic to have the definite article as an ending at the end of the noun. That is also uh, true for many other languages, for example Swedish, where the shoe is skoon with this n added to the end of the noun, uh, marking the definite article. And Bulgarian even has the same suffix as, Slo as Somali. So the shoe is obufka ta, with a ta at the end. Um, well, uh, these two genders in Somali are called feminine and masculine, like in French or in Arabic. And the ta ending uh, marks feminine nouns, whereas the ka ending mark, marks the masculine nouns. And these notions, masculine and feminine, they are maybe in some ways misleading because uh, one shouldn't think that very much of, of, of sex. Uh, there is nothing specifically feminine about a shoe and there is nothing specifically masculine about a fire. So this is very arbitrary. Um, so the, the thing that really marks the feminine gender is the T and the Thing that really marks the masculine gender is a K, as the the final A is the same in both genders. So T represents feminine, K represents masculine. However, these um, sounds or letters uh, are altered or changed after certain other sounds. So if a noun ends in E, you cannot add t after an e. Instead, you have to add d. And you cannot you cannot add a masculine k after an e. Instead, you have to add a g. So uh, the knife is mindida, and the house is guriga. Uh, furthermore, if the noun ends in a l, you cannot add a t after a l. Instead, these two merge, the l and t merge into a sh. So the definite form of bil is bisha, and this sh now marks the feminine gender of this noun. And uh, in the masculine, uh, after an e, you cannot add a g. Instead, uh, sorry, you cannot add a k or a g. Instead, you add a h. And uh, at the same time, the e changes into an a. So the indefinite fure ki becomes furaha the ki. Uh, so uh, there are there are several different. Um, um, alternative forms of the definite article endings uh, in the feminine as well as in the masculine gender.
Um, so coming back to the uh, difference between the two genders, we said that the T is marking feminine gender and the K is marking masculine gender in the definite article. When you want to... Uh, oh, sorry, there is a mistake. Um, it says Elden in Swedish instead of the fire in, in, in English. Uh, <clears throat> when you want to refer back to uh, a feminine noun with a pronoun, you want to say the shoe, and in the next sentence you want to refer to it by it, then in Somali the it becomes a, uh, as a refers back to a feminine noun. If you want to refer back to a masculine noun like tapka, the fire, uh, the pronoun you have to use is u, because u is masculine and it refers back to masculine nouns. So in the first sentence you might talk about the fire, say dapka, and in the next sentence, referring back, you will use u. There are also other pronouns, like demonstrative pronouns and possessive pronouns, and they uh, contain this typical uh, sound or letter t uh, and k. So t for the feminine, that, if you want to say that, shu, uh, you use tas with a T, because shu is feminine, and if you want to say that about the fire, you use kas um, with a K, because the fire is masculine. Same then with my, if you talk about the shoe and you want to say my, mine, you say taida uh, in the feminine form. And if you want to say my fire, then you use kaiga the masculine form of my, mine. Uh, and also the verbs in Somali have different forms uh, for the feminine and masculine gender. In the feminine gender, most of the time there is a T marking the feminine gender. Uh, in some forms there is an S instead of the T. So uh, is Tahai with a T, sings, esta with a T, uh, but is singing, he says, uh, has an S, so the progressive form has an S instead of the T. Whereas in the masculine gender, if you want to say that the fire is something big, maybe, uh, then you use yahai. Uh, and if a man sings, it's hesa, uh, or if a man is singing, hesa ya. Um, then in the masculine verbs, there is no uh, marking uh, overtly with a K. So in the verbs, it's only the feminine forms that are marked overtly with a T or an S. Uh, when it comes to adjectives in Somali, there are no gender forms. So, Somali adjective has the same form together with both feminine and masculine nouns. No difference there. So that was a um, very short first introduction of the notion of gender in Somali. Uh, there is, of course, more to say about the definite article, for example, about the different pronouns and the different, uh, different forms of the verb, but we will come back to that later.